The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. At 48, sold American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Today, tomorrow, and always. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Quality distinguishes a man, and quality distinguishes a product. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco. Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. gentlemen, this is New Year's Eve. Yes, New Year's Eve. The one time in the year when everybody should let their hair down. Yes, sir. Jackie said let it down, not take it off. <laughs> oh, oh, pardon me. Continue, Don. So, in keeping with the spirit of New Year's Eve, I bring you a man who will get up at midnight, hang up his calendar, refill his hot water bottle, get back in bed again. Hmm. Here he is, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hello again. This is Playboy Benny <laughs> wishing you all a happy new year. Don, that was a funny introduction, and this being New Year's Eve, I'm not going to be mad at you. Of course, I'll hate myself in the morning. <laughs> yes, Don, here it is, New Year's Eve, and in just a few hours, it'll be 1945. 1945. Gosh, what I wouldn't give to be 19 again. <laughs> what you wouldn't give to be 45 again. <laughs> Mary, that's an easy joke if I ever heard one. But this is New Year's Eve. What? Then I'm not going to be mad at you, you know? Thanks, Cookie. You're welcome, Poopsie. <laughs> oh, hello, Phil. I didn't see you come in. Hiya, Jackson. Well, I wanted to surprise you. Uh, do you uh, notice anything different about me? Let's see. A new tie? No. New shirt? No. Oh, a new suit? No. Well, what is it? I'm wearing those lousy shoelaces you gave me for Christmas. <laughs> Phil, that is not the proper spirit, you know. Well, Jack, I hate to bring this up, but you didn't think of me. You didn't give me anything for Christmas. Oh, yes, Don. I ordered a nice gift for you, but it didn't get here yet. See, they're having a little trouble at Montgomery Ward. <laughs> you know I mean? <laughs> and listen, kids, now that you brought it up, that was a fine present you all chipped in and gave me. Hmm. A gift certificate for a dinner at the thrifty drugstore. <laughs> The meal was good, but I kept slipping <laughs> off the stool all the time. <laughs> anyway, kids, Christmas is over, and after our program, I want you all to come over to my house and see the new year in. Boy, am I going to have fun. Oh, sure, sure. What do you mean, oh, sure, sure? You'll have fun all right. You'll drink three bottles of Coca-Cola, two 7-Ups, and one Dr. Pepper. Then ten minutes later, you'll put on a lady's hat and holler, Yippee! What? Then you'll have two fingers of Dad's old-fashioned root beer and Rochester will have to carry you up to bed. <laughs> what are you kids talking about? You're the only one I ever saw that drinks champagne out of a spoon. Now, listen, kids, I may be that way all year, but when it comes to New... Oh, hello, Larry. Hello, Mr. Benny. Happy New Year. Same to you. I'm glad you got here, kid. It's time for your song. Okay, but can I tell you about my New Year's resolution first? Sure, kid. What is it? Well, I made a resolution never to ask you for a raise unless you gave it to me voluntarily. Well, well, uh, whatever made you think of that? It's on page 84 of his contract. <laughs> it is not. Anybody that works for me can ask for a raise any time they want to. I can't help it if the government throws salaries. You know, you're not a bad little refrigerator yourself. <laughs> All right. 
right, Phil, all right. But the next time you want a raise, ask for it yourself. Don't send Alice and the kids around. <laughs> and where do they get those ragged old clothes? <laughs> <laughs> what a corny act they put on <laughs> Say, Jack what? Getting back to resolutions It wouldn't hurt if you made a few yourself Mary, I've already made a resolution You'd be surprised if I told you what it is No kidding, Jackson, what is it? Well, I made a resolution that from now on I'm going to be friends with Fred Allen And never say anything against him Ah, uh, Jack, that's really swell You're really being magnanimous after all the things Alan has said about you. Oh, Don, it was all in the spirit of fun. Alan's the nice guy. never meant those things. It was just for laughs. Yeah, you're right, Jackson. But I'll never forget the laugh Alan got when he said you squeeze a nickel so hard you get milk out of the buffalo. (laughs) (laughs) He was sharp that night, that kid was. (laughs) Oh, did did Alan say that? (laughs) What a sense of humor, really. (laughs) And I'll never forget the time Alan said that you're so bow-legged and your girl is so knock-kneed when you dance together you look like a mix master. <laughs> <laughs> what a sense of humor he used to have. <laughs> what do you mean, used to have? Well, that guy's mentality is so low, he has to lie down to think. Jack, you're resolute. And with those bags under his eyes, his face looks like an old pair of pants with the pockets inside out. <laughs> Jack, you're resolute. I've still got till 12 o'clock. <laughs> Kid, well, I think of some more. I hope I get some beauties before midnight. Believe me. With my light brown derby and my bright green tie and my hair all slick upon my head, I went to lose a lonely owl on the trolley and lost my heart instead. Her high starch collar and her light brown hair She had such a gay and winsome air I started to yen, so I counted to ten Then I counted to ten again Clang, clang, clang went the trolley Ding, ding, ding went the bell Zing, zing, zing went my heartstrings For the moment I saw her I fell Chug, chug, chug went the motor Thump, thump, thump went the brake Thump, thump, thump went my heartstrings When she smiled I could feel the car shake I tipped my hand and took a seat I said I hoped I hadn't stepped upon her feet I asked her name and lost my breath She looked so lovely that it scared me half to death Buzz, buzz, buzz went the buzzer Flop, flop, flop went the wheel Stop, stop, stop went my heart straight she started to leave I took hold of her sleeve With my hand And as if it were planned She stayed on with me And it was grand Just to stand with her hand Holding mine To the end of the number there, Larry. That was a trolley song sung by Larry Stevens. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as is our custom every year at this time, we will present our annual New Year's play entitled The New Tenant or Goodbye 44, Hello 45. As most of you will remember, this is an allegorical fantasy that takes place... Hey, Jackson, uh, just a minute. What do you mean by allegorical fantasy? Well, for instance, Phil, did you see Dumbo, the little elephant with the big ears? No. Did you see Ferdinand the Bull? No. Well, did you see the reluctant dragon? No, I haven't had a drink in three months, Jack. I've been trying to get away from this stuff. 
hate Well, I'm not going to explain it to you, Phil. You'll understand it as we go along. And that last thing you said is a lie anyway. Now, in our... <laughs> now, in our... Uh, not even in the script, I know. Now, in our... Now, in our fantasy, I will again play the part of the old year 1944 who has been living in a big boarding house called the United States which is run by Uncle Sam and his wife, Columbia. Hey, Jackson, am I going to play the part of Uncle Sam? Yes, Phil, you'll wear a bright blue jacket with white stars on it and red and white striped pants. And I'll lay eight to five people who think I'm Bing Crosby. <laughs> Never mind. Now, Mary, you play the part of Columbia. You're be, you'll be Phil's wife, and you and Phil have 48 children. Holy smoke, now they'll really think he's Crosby. <laughs> Let me explain it to you, Mary. Your children are the 48 states. You see, each state is a child. Oh, Jack, how could I possibly have 48 children? Mary, you were born in 1776. Oh. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I look pretty good for an old babe, don't I? <laughs> not bad, not bad. Now, Don. Yes, Jack? You play a very important part in tonight's fantasy. You're going to be the world. The world, huh? Yes. And loosen your belt, Don. Your equator is strangling South America. <laughs> and now, folks, this play will go on immediately. Oh, say, Jack. Yes, Don. Uh, come here a minute. I want to show you something. What is it? Well, if I'm the world, then my chest must be the United States. Uh-huh. And right over here, a little to the southeast, is Goldsboro, North Carolina. Right here? <laughs> Yes. Oh, pardon me, Don. I didn't know my finger was cold. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, anyway, Jack, this little town of Goldsboro is right in the heart of the tobacco country. I know, Don, but we've got a play to do. And you it's see? here that they get those finer, lighter, golden leaves of tobacco and make them into Lucky Strike cigarettes. Well, that's fine, Don, but you and see... And that's why that the... slogan, LSMFT, is so true. But, Don, I can't see where that has anything to do with our New Year's play. You see, LSMFT stands for Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Jack, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Don, that happens to be a statement of fact while our play is an allegorical fantasy. There's no connection. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Well, that's all right, Don, but don't bring it up again until next Sunday. <laughs> now, button up your shirt. Goldsboro's getting goose pimples there. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, our annual New Year's play will go on immediately after a music... Oh, darn it. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, what is it? You can bring your guests over any time you want. I just finished making the punch. The punch? That's good. But, boss, I lost your recipe, so I used mine. <laughs> what's, what's your recipe? Simple and direct. First you put in a gallon of grape juice, then you start pouring in the gin. Uh, how much gin? Till you can't taste the grape juice. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. That ain't all. Then you start pouring in the bourbon. Bourbon with gin? How much bourbon do you put in? Till you can't taste the scotch. <laughs> Scott, what kind of a silly drink is that? Scotch, bourbon, gin, and grape juice. Get rid of it immediately. Okay, I'll see if I can drain it out of the washing machine. <laughs> the washing machine? Rochester, I left my new shirt in there this morning. I know, boss. I noticed it after I poured in the stuff. Well, for heaven's sake, take my shirt out. It's too late now. There's nothing left but the buttons. <laughs> oh, Rochester, this is the worst yet. At least you can take out the buttons. Oh, boss, they're so happy, I hate to disturb them. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say now, Rochester. Don't monkey with it anymore. I'll be home right after the broadcast. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Can I leave about 10 o'clock tonight? I'm going to a New Year's party, too. No, Rochester. Every time you go to a New Year's party, you always stay out so late. Oh, I'm going to be back early this year. What time? About Thursday. <laughs> well, all right, Rochester. New Year's Eve. Enjoy yourself. But before you go, in fact, before I get home, I want you to empty that punch out of the washing machine. It's too dangerous to have in the house when you... Don't worry, boss. As soon as I hang up, I'll... <laughs> I knew it, I knew it, the punch exploded. Rochester! Rochester, what happened? Rochester, are you hurt? Not unless I make a bad landing. <laughs> a bad landing. Rochester, Rochester, where's the punch bowl? I don't know, but I'm over the rose bowl. <laughs> oh, well played, Phil. He'll be back after the game.
and Hollywood Canteen, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for our annual New Year's play entitled The New Tenant, or Goodbye 44, Hello 45. As the curtain rises, it's almost midnight of December 31st, and old man 1944 is packing his bags and ready to make his exit. Curtain music. <laughs> Columbia, Columbia, come here a minute, please. What do you want, 44? Got to gather up my things before little 45 gets here. Hand me those, will you? Are these yours? Yep. Why, old-timer Bobby Socks. Well, I've had my moments, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. Might as well pack those racetracks. They ain't going to be used for a while. <laughs> see, there's Bay Meadows. Here's Hialeah. Yep. Here's Santa Anita. Say, I never knew they had a $10 window. <laughs> and what else? Oh, yes, hand me that bundle of swing music, will Here you? Here you are. Thanks. I'm going to dance with the dolly, with the hole in her stocking, with the hole in her stocking, with the hole in her stocking. <laughs> Sloppy little dame, ain't she? <laughs> oh, clang, 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 went the trolley. A ding, 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 went the bell. <laughs> Come in. Hello, old timer. Oh, hello, Uncle Sam. Where you been the last few weeks? Oh, I've been all over, all over. I've been delivering Christmas presents to all my nieces and my nephews. Well, Sam, you got here just in time to say goodbye to 1944. Yep. In a few minutes, I'll be leaving you, and I'll never be back on Earth again. Gosh, I kind of feel sorry for you. Why? Now you'll never know what happened to Snowflake and Shaky. <laughs> I was looking for you yesterday. Where were you? Well, I ran up the West Coast. I wanted to ask Henry Kaiser what's cooking. Uh-huh. And between what's and cooking, he launched three ships. <laughs> well, you're getting the ships, Sam. Just get the men to sail them. You're all set. Well, I better finish my packing. Let's see. Maybe I ought to take along some of these moving pictures. You want to take going my way? Everybody's seen it. No, I better leave that. I want little 1945 to see it. With all the problems he's going to have, that picture will do him a lot of good. Well, how about taking Jack Benny's new picture? No, that's going to be one of his problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'd better... Come in. Well, howdy, everybody. Hi, old-timer. Well, what do you know? It's the world come to say goodbye to me. Yeah, I'll miss you, old-timer. Lots of things happened to me while you were here. That's right, world. We had 365 exciting days, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> what you laughing at, world? Remember last month when I burped and Tokyo had an earthquake? <laughs> yep. Say, world, your earthquake shook them almost as bad as my B-29. You're right, Sam. Say, world, why don't you hang around till the new tenant arrives? Sure, stay a while, world. Sit down on the refrigerator, cool off your Arctic Circle. <laughs> Say, Columbia. Yes? Tune in the radio. This will be my last chance to get a little entertainment. Okay. You're listening to another broadcast of Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. The next case is that of a man named Benito Mussolini, alias Il Duce. A sure way to identify this fugitive is to get him up on a high building and show him a balcony. If he steps out on the balcony and makes a speech, he's Mussolini. If he steps out and there is no balcony, let's hope so. <laughs> I wonder where he's hiding. Oh, I wouldn't worry too much about him. His troublemaking days are over. Yeah, I'll get another station. And now that you have answered the first one correctly, would you like to try the $2 question? Yeah. The uh, $2 question is a simple one. Uh, oh, by the way, what is your name? My name is Adolf Hitler. But for $2, you can call me Schickel Gruber. <laughs> All right, Adolf. Uh, would you like to try the $4 question? Yeah. You will be sorry, Adolf. Nobody asked you, Gering. Please, please, no coaching from the audience. Now for the next question. <clears throat> Tell me, Adolf, who won the Battle of Stalingrad? Germany. I'm sorry, that's the wrong answer. Wrong? Schweinhund, you call me wrong? Adolf Hitler can't be wrong. I'm always right. Heil Hitler. Heil myself. For blut and blut and dumb cock and Adolf, Adolf, stop chewing up the rug. I know what you are thinking. You are 
are thinking that because I threw a punch, I am crazy. I am not crazy. I am Adolf Hitler. I am one of the greatest. Whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody else is crazy, but I'm all right. I just like to eat rocks. <laughs> Get another, get another station, Columbia. Sickle Gruber seems to have lost control of himself. Okay, old timer. And now, Mr. Anthony, we have the case of Mr. H. All right. Will Mr. H step up to the microphone? Your name, please. My name is Hiro Hito. I live in Imperial Paras, which is located in what is left of Tokyo. Mm. And uh, you have a problem? Uh, yes, Mr. Anthony. I went into partnership with a German in a war. First, we was winning. Now we are losing. Almost every day, the Big 29 fly over Tokyo. And now I wish I had never listened to that German that no good son. No names, please. <laughs> now, now get on with your problem. Well, my problem is this. If I have the world's greatest army and the world's greatest air force and the world's greatest navy, then please tell me, Mr. Anthony. Yes? Why in the name of Nagisaki am I getting the sukiyaki knocked out of me? I'll tell you why, Hirohito. Because you and your whole gang are a bunch of dirty no No names, please. You... No names. Yes, Hirohito, you have a problem. But it's of your own making, and I cannot nor would I give you any advice, any consolation, or any hope for the future. And if you'll excuse the expression, scram, bum! That's telling him? Turn it off, Columbia. Shut it off. Don't go on. Look at that clock. Just got my duds together in time. Hmm. That's the first stroke of 12. Wonder what's keeping the new tenant. Don't worry. He'll show up. He always does. Say, here's a tip for you, Sam. You worked hard during the time I was here, and you did a good job. But I want you to work even harder for the little fella that's coming in. Well, don't you worry, old-timer. I'm really rolling now. Hmm, time's a-fleeting, but I can't leave till that little shaver gets here. Mm, that must be him now. Yeah. Come in. Well, it's the little new year. Hello, Sonny. Hello, old-timer. Isn't he cute? Just look at the size of him. Yeah. <laughs> Bet he doesn't weigh much more than Sinatra. <laughs> What's, what's that you got under your arm, Sonny? Some forms I'm going to try awfully hard to get signed this year. Yeah? What are they? Well, here's the most important one. It says, un, un, how do you pronounce these big words? Let's see it. Oh, that says, unconditional surrender. Well, I hope you get them signed during soon. Hey, kid, I want you to meet Uncle Sam and his wife, Columbia. Glad to know you, folks. Hello, Sonny. Hiya, bub. You ought to have a coat on with them diapers. It's pretty chilly tonight. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I sure was cold the first night I got here. <laughs> Say, bub, I almost forgot. This is the world. I want you to meet him, too. Hello, son. Hello. So you're the world, huh? Yes, sir. Gosh, there's enough room on him for everybody. Well, there should be, but there are a couple of fellas that are trying to hog it all. They ain't never satisfied. Now sit down, Sonny. I want to show you my album. A few pictures I took while I was here. Now here's a family picture of a bunch of Uncle Sam's nephews. Say, they all look alike, don't they? Well, they do in those uniforms, but let me tell you something, Sonny. They're doing a great job, and you can be proud of each and every one of them. What are their names? Well, I, I don't know them all, but... There's a fella named Jones. Here's another one here, O'Reilly. There's a kid called Spinelli. Right next to him, see that colored boy there? Mm-hmm. His name's Johnson. Right in back of him, that's Lopez. Right alongside of him is a fella named Ginsburg. And the fella way over on this end here is Peterson. All good Americans. Now, Sonny, here's a picture of another group of... Uncle Sam's nephews. Now, these boys felt just like you did. You know, about the world being big enough for everybody. These boys, just like the others, went out to do something about it. Gee, they look like the kind of fellows that would do a good job. They did more than a good job. 
Too bad they can't come back and tell you about it. And listen, Sonny, one of your jobs is not to forget what they did. And here's something else you don't want to forget. What's that, sir? Well, you got to see that Sam's nephews and nieces here at home stay on their jobs. Keep giving blood to the Red Cross. And never stop buying bonds until you get that paper signed. You know, the one you brought with you. Yes, sir. And another thing. Say, old timer, you better get moving. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't rush me. Oh, by the way, son, Uncle Sam's got a nephew called Franklin that's been taking mighty good care of him. Ain't he, Sam? Darn tootin'. Keep an eye on him, son, and give him all the help you can. Franklin, eh? I'll write that down. Well, my time's almost up. Gotta be leaving now. Goodbye, Junior. So long, Pop. Goodbye, Sam. So long, old timer. Well, here I go. Goodbye, 44. So long, Columbia. Keep them flying. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette, and the tobacco used in Lucky Strike cigarettes is fine tobacco. Witness independent tobacco experts, men like Mr. Charles W. Jenkins of Bowling Green, Kentucky, who said, As a warehouseman, I have seen Lucky Strike by the lighter, naturally milder tobacco. And so I have been smoking Luckies for 24 years. The next time you buy cigarettes, remember Mr. Jenkins' statement. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 45, at 45, sold American. And Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. At 43, sold American. Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. L.S.M.F.T. 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 Yes, sir. Right you are. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Good night. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI, Los Angeles. <laughs> 